everything is subsumed within all-inclusive awakened mind. Since there is no phenomena that is not included in awakened mind, the true nature of all phenomena is that of awakened mind. Space is a metaphor for awakened mind. Since that mind has no cause and is not an object that comes into being, it does not abide in any finite way, is inexpressible and transcends the realm of the imagination. The phrase, the realm of space, is simply a way of illustrating it metaphorically. If even the metaphor itself cannot be described as some thing, how could the underlying meaning that it illustrates be imagined or described? It should be understood as a metaphor for what is naturally pure. The underlying meaning is that awakened mind is self-knowing awareness equal to space. It is not within the realm of the imagination, for it defies illustration or description. Naturally lucid and unwavering, the spacious expanse of utter lucidity is not created, but is spontaneously present, with no fixed reach or range. Dharmakaya is a spacious domain that is the heart essence of enlightenment. The evidence is that anything can and does arise due to the dynamic energy of awareness. Even as it arises, there is no place of arising, or anything arising. Arising is simply a label, for if examined, it is found to be like space. Everything being encompassed within a supreme state of equalness without bias constitutes the expanse of infinite evenness, which entails no dualistic perception. Given that naturally occurring timeless awareness the true nature of phenomena is boundless. Analogies are used so that it can be ascertained through metaphor, underlying meaning and evidence. Equal to space, 
that nature which subsumes everything and is without differentiation or exclusion is exemplified by these three linking factors. In the womb of basic space, the supremely spacious state of equalness, everything is timelessly equal, with no time frame of earlier or later, no better or worse. This is the enlightened intent of Samatabhadra of Vajrasattva. Awakened mind can be compared to the sun. It is utterly lucid by nature and forever uncompounded with nothing to obscure it. It is unobstructed and spontaneously present. Without elaboration, it is the scope of the true nature of phenomena, which does not entail concepts. In being empty, it is the Dharmakaya. In being lucid, it is the Sambhogakaya. And in being radiant, it is Namanakaya. These three Kayas do not come together or separate. Since these enlightened qualities are already and forever spontaneously present, they are not obscured by the darkness of flaws and faults. They are identical in being without transition or change throughout the three times. Identical in permeating all Buddhas and ordinary beings alike. This is called naturally occurring, awakened mind. Its dynamic energy arises as anything at all whether there is realization or not. There is the universe of appearances and possibilities and beings' perceptions in all their variety. Though things arise, none of them has any independent nature whatsoever like water in a mirage, a dream, an echo, a phantom emanation, a reflection, a castle in the air, or a hallucination. All things are clearly apparent, yet do not truly exist. They merely manifest adventitiously, without basis or support. 
you should realize that all these manifestations are temporary, adventitious phenomena. Due to the nature of spontaneously present awakened mind, there is a continuous display. The magical illusion of samsara and nirvana. Since this entire magical display is fully encompassed within basic space, you should know that it does not stray from the scope of primordial being. Within this, everything is the scope of awakened mind. With that single perfection, all is perfect. Without being made so, everything is perfect. Naturally occurring timeless awareness is by nature spontaneously perfect. Given that awakened mind is neither apparent nor not apparent, the outer and inner worlds of samsara and nirvana do not exist as phenomena. Yet, arise nonetheless as a myriad display. The universe of appearances and possibilities, whether of samsara or nirvana, because they are by nature the stirring of mind's dynamic energy. In simply arising, forms are by nature empty. From what is unborn, there manifests what seems to be born. But even as it manifests, nothing whatsoever has been born. From what is unceasing, there manifests what seems to cease. But there is no cessation. These are illusory expressions of emptiness. Even with abiding, there is nothing that abides. There is no basis on which anything could abide. Within the context in which there is no coming or going, Regardless of what manifests, it never exists as what it seems to be. And so one is reduced to merely labelling it as having no independent nature. Sensory appearances, moreover, arise naturally 
due to the dynamic energy of awareness. And so their nature is described in a purely symbolic way as one of interdependent connection. Even in the very moment that things seem to arise due to that dynamic energy, they do so without being subject to extremes or divisions. With no question of whether or not something arises, and even dynamic energy is just a symbolic term, with no finite essence whatsoever. So within the context that is never subject to transition or change, nothing strays in the slightest from awakened mind. This is the third section of the precious treasury of the basic space of phenomena, presenting the metaphors for awakened mind. It is the nature of all-inclusive awakened mind that it is not apparent, for it transcends that which is apparent. It is not empty, for it transcends that which is empty. It is not existent, for it has no substance or characteristics. Nor is it non-existent, for it permeates all samsara and nirvana, neither existent nor non-existent, it is primordial basic space, spontaneous and uniform. not subject to extremes or division, and without substance, foundation, or underlying basis. Uninterrupted, awareness is the expanse of awakened mind. Without transition or change, the sky of basic space is timelessly and infinitely extensive.
naturally occurring timeless awareness which has ultimate meaning and that nothing compares to it is subsumed within the single sphere of being unborn and unceasing indeterminate and all-pervasive it is absolutely without limiting extremes The legacy of the Vajra Heart Essence is one of unwavering spontaneity and equalness. The immensity of sublime basic space, which is not made or unmade, is not some finite range that can be characterized with words. It is the welling forth of an expanse of sublime knowing, the scope of one's self-knowing awareness. A yogin who is free of conceptual and descriptive elaborations comes to a decision that whether it can be characterized or not is irrelevant since neither meditation nor anything to meditate on can be discovered there is no need to slay the enemies of dullness agitation and thought Within the timelessly abiding, omnipresent state, the true nature of phenomena, there are no concepts of self or other. And so the three realms themselves constitute a pure realm of natural equalness. For victorious ones of the three times, awareness's own manifestations are pure, since everything constitutes a single state of equalness with nothing to renounce or accept. There is nothing in the slightest to attain elsewhere. All phenomena are clearly evident within the vast expanse of mind itself. Yet, they do not stray in the least from the ultimate meaning of equalness. There is no division into outer and inner and no disturbance due to thoughts arising and subsiding. The foundation, awakened mind, dispels the darkness of extremes, with nothing having to be renounced, the potential for error is cut through as a matter of course. The world of myriad ways in which beings perceive 
and even the kayas and timeless awareness of pure Buddhahood. All that permeates the realm of basic space as a continuous display arises due to dynamic energy, either in light of realization or in its absence. There is simply realization or its lack within the realm of the basic space of phenomena. For those with realization who have reached a state of bliss, there is pure perception. For those without it, there is non-recognition of awareness and the habitual patterns of dualistic perception, from which sensory appearances manifest in all their variety. Though none of this strays from basic space, Awakened mind is the actual state of everything. It exhibits an unceasing quality. Whatever arises in all its variety is naturally and clearly apparent, evident within pure basic space, the true nature of phenomena. There is no division or exclusion. The mode of awareness is without restriction. Unobstructed, timeless awareness, a naturally occurring spacious expanse, is utterly lucid unobscured, with no division into outer and inner. And so self-knowing awareness is the great radiant mirror of mind. The precious gem that provides for all wants is the basic space of phenomena. Since everything occurs naturally without having to be sought, naturally occurring timeless awareness is a splendid source of all one could wish for. However many great qualities can be enumerated, they come from basic space and are of basic space, arising continuously as sublime skillful means. Since everything is spontaneously perfect in unborn basic space, the substance of things is outshone by their emptiness as the expanse of enlightenment.
while their emptiness is outshone by self-knowing awareness as the expanse of enlightenment. In awakened mind, appearances and emptiness have never existed. But do not fixate on non-duality, for the inconceivable miraculous display still occurs with no time frame the unborn basic space of phenomena is an unchanging, undivided and uncompounded expanse. Throughout the three times, Buddhahood is awareness, the basic space of timeless awareness. The expanse of enlightenment, of self-knowing awareness that outshines dualistic perceptions. With no division into outer and inner, the true nature of phenomena is spontaneous and spacious. This is the fourth section of the precious treasury of the basic space of phenomena, demonstrating the nature of awakened mind. Within mind itself, the essence of awakened mind, there is no view to cultivate in meditation, no conduct to undertake, no fruition to achieve, no levels of realization or paths to traverse. No mandala to visualize, no recitation, repetition, or stage of completion. No empowerment to be bestowed, and no samaya to uphold. In the pure state that is the true nature of phenomena, timelessly and spontaneously present, such adventitious factors of developmental effort and causality are transcended.
The essence of these factors is awakened mind, unobscured by clouds or darkness. The sun shines in the sky by its very nature, not as something adventitious. Any teaching concerning the ten attributes that involve effort and achievement is given in response to the confusion that occurs adventitiously due to the dynamic energy of awareness. It is a skillful means for engaging those whose acumen requires development through effort. It is not given to yogins who genuinely experience the ultimate meaning of the Vajra Heart Essence, Ati Yoga. So that individuals who exert themselves in order to progress developmentally may be led to primordial basic space, the true nature of phenomena. There are the spiritual approaches of the Shravika, the Pracheka Buddha and the Bodhisattva. These are the stages demonstrated on the three lesser levels. The three divisions of Kriya, Upa and Yoga are by their very nature the three intermediate levels. The three divisions of Maha, Anu and Ati manifest primordially as the three higher levels. By opening the doorway that leads beyond other approaches based on causes or results, they guide fortunate beings to the three levels of enlightenment. culmination of all these, moreover, is found in the ultimate meaning of the Vajra Heart Essence. They must lead towards this superb, supreme secret, and so utter lucidity, sublimely unchanging, is the pinnacle of them all. This is renowned as the spiritual approach of the heart essence of manifest enlightenment. Furthermore, of the two alternatives within spiritual teaching, one involves a concerted effort to accept or reject. It is taught in order to refine away the habitual patterns of ordinary mind and mental events, whose nature it is to arise as a display due to dynamic energy. This approach holds that timeless awareness is purer than ordinary mind. The supreme teaching involves no concerted effort to accept or reject. Naturally occurring timeless awareness, the essence of awakened mind itself, 
is made fully evident and that one does not waver from the direct experience of it. So there is no need to strive for it elsewhere. It rests in and of itself. So do not seek it elsewhere. This, the ultimate meaning of suchness itself, is like the essence of the sun. I hold that it abides as a natural state of rest, unwavering, utter lucidity. It can be shown that other approaches are like attempts to create the already present sun by dispelling clouds and darkness through a process of effort and achievement. Therefore, these two kinds of approach are as different as heaven and earth. Nowadays, those elephants who pride themselves on being Ati practitioners allege that thought patterns, stirring and proliferating, are awakened mind. All of these fools are submerged in darkness, far from the meaning of natural great perfection. They do not understand even dynamic energy or what arises from that energy to say nothing of the essence of awakened mind. In this discussion of mind, primordially pure awakened mind is ultimate truth the true nature of phenomena as basic space. Beyond description or imagination, it is the perfection of sublime knowing, inherently unwavering, it is utterly lucid by nature and timelessly free of elaboration, of concepts stirring and proliferating and so is called the essence of being, analogous to the orb of the sun. Its dynamic energy is unobstructed awareness as a continuous mode for what arises and is free of both conceptualization and analysis. Though vividly lucid, it does not entail dualistic perception. Awareness expresses itself through its dynamic energy as consciousness that involves conceptual elaboration, marked by the myriad dualistic habitual patterns that such consciousness generates.
since what are not objects are misconstrued as objects. There are the five kinds of sense objects. And since what has no identity is invested with identity, there are the five afflictive emotions. These constitute all possible confused perception of the universe and the beings within it. Even what manifests as samsara arises due to that dynamic energy. But when this is not realized, the manifestation itself is one of erroneous perception. Through realization, within the vast expanse of being, of the true nature of phenomena, coming from nowhere, going nowhere, and abiding nowhere at all, there is the enlightened intent of the total freedom of the three realms. This is the transmission of Ati, spontaneous presence, the Vajra heart essence, arising from the holy positive expanse of supreme spaciousness. Within the essence of totally pure, awakened mind, there is no object of you or anything that constitutes of you, nor the slightest sense of anything to look at or anyone looking. There is no ordinary consciousness meditating or anything to meditate on. due to spontaneous presence, without any duality of goal and conduct, there is not the slightest sense of any fruition to achieve. Regarding what is non-existent, there are no levels of realization to traverse, and so there are never any paths to journey along. Since utter lucidity is already ensured as a supreme sphere of being, there are no mandalas to visualize through the proliferation and resolution of thoughts. And no mantras, recitations, empowerments, or samaya.
There is no non-referential stage of completion, such as gradual process of dissolution. In the kayas and timeless awareness, which are already ensured timelessly, there is no causality based on compounded adventitious circumstances. If any of these were the case, timeless awareness would not occur naturally. Being compounded, such awareness would be subject to destruction. And then how could it be characterized as spontaneously present and uncompounded? Therefore, within the essence of ultimate basic space, causality is transcended and the ten attributes do not pertain. Mind itself, the ultimate meaning of genuine being, involves no effort or achievement. Please understand this in order to pacify all conceptual elaborations of existence and non-existence. This is the fifth section of the precious treasury of the basic space of phenomena, demonstrating the transcendence of effort and achievement, cause and effect. <laughs> 